Hi, welcome to this channel. Today in this video I will describe a new topic, Strybeck curve. So we will try to understand what is Strybeck curve. So Strybeck curve is used in lubrication and it was proposed in 1901-1902 and actually Strybeck, a German engineer, found out through experiments that so Strybeck was working on railway axles and journal bearings and ball bearings and he found out by experiments the relation between coefficient of friction and speed. So for example in a journal bearing so if this is the shaft and this is the bearing and it is the shaft is rotating at an RPM of omega. So he found that the coefficient of friction varies with the omega or RPM and it has got some relation something like this and he found out that as we increase the pressure so this there is a shift in the curve. So that means for the same coefficient of friction to obtain same coefficient of friction if we are going to increase sorry this is P2 and this is P1 so if we are going to increase the load so P is the pressure so if we are going to increase the pressure to obtain the same coefficient of friction we need to increase the the RPM the speed of the shaft. So this was the basis of his initial experiments and later and actually this observation to some extent was also found out by another researcher named Thurston in 1873. So this kind of relation between coefficient of friction and the speed and it was found out that it gives a kind of minimum. So it was found out by Thurston in 1873 but Strybeck's work was more elaborate and it got more attention and it was published in 1901-1902. So, so this kind of curve is or diagram is known as Strybeck curve or Strybeck diagram. So but we should know that Thurston in 1873 also found out similar kind of relationship. Later, Mayo Hersey. So Hersey proposed in 1914 that if everything all conditions are same for a journal bearing the viscosity multiplied by rotational speed divided by the pressure or sometimes it is also taken as the load so this for any kind of friction this will be same if we only change the combination. So that means this parameter will be same for obtaining the same coefficient of friction. So that means here if we plot the viscosity and this is dynamic viscosity multiplied by the RPM or the speed and divided by the pressure. So if we plot this 
on x-axis and y-axis if we plot mu, then all the curves can be put to single curve. So therefore, the stripic curve that we plot is basically mu is plotted against this number and it is shown something like this. So in honor of Hersey, this number is also known as Hersey number. Sometimes this number is also referred as Sommerfeld number. Because this has got similarity, similarity to Sommerfeld number. So this curve is actually known as Stribeck curve. And now we will discuss the various regimes of lubrication in this curve. So here we should remember that eta is dynamic viscosity. So this is the typical form of Strabeck curve and here we can divide this into different zones. So this, the initial part is known as the boundary lubrication regime. Then this region is known as mixed lubrication. Beyond this, this part is known as EHL or Elasto Hydrodynamic Lubrication. And beyond this is hydrodynamic lubrication. Of course, there will be overlap of the different regimes, but this is a rough idea of how we can separate different lubrication regimes according to this number, RC number. So, the boundary lubrication gives, in this regime, we will get high coefficient of friction and the coefficient of friction can be in the range of 0.1 or even higher. In the, will be in the range of 0.01 and the lowest coefficient of friction we can get is in the range of 0.001. So this is a rough estimate of the coefficient of friction. Uh, in actual cases, it might vary. But we should know that for this condition, we will get the lowest coefficient of friction because this is the reason when the fluid film lubrication is working. So fluid film means when the shaft is rotating, there is a film of liquid that separates the shaft from the bearing. So there is a total separation between the two and therefore the coefficient of friction is extremely low and the coefficient of friction will be decided by the viscosity of this fluid. As we increase the speed, the, there is a tendency for the coefficient of friction to rise and that is because of the viscosity. So we know that from the Newton's law of viscosity, the shear stress is equal to the viscosity multiplied by the shear rate. The shear rate basically 
change it or increase it as we increase the omega or the RPM. So once we increase the omega, the shear rate is changing and therefore shear stress will, will increase. So, so it will take more force to shear the liquid, the lubricant which is here. And that, that's the reason why the coefficient, will, coefficient of friction will tend to rise as we increase the speed even further. So the ideal lubrication will be here in this range. So here this is elastohydrodynamic lubrication but also hydrodynamic lubrication because these two regions will overlap with each other. So, so although this is the ideal case but in any kind of lubrication we cannot avoid other conditions because the speed will change depending on the condition or we can simply say during the start and stop of a bearing the speed will be zero so therefore the coefficient of friction will be very high. So we always get a range of coefficient of friction but it, for most of the working time of the bearing we try to get the lowest coefficient of friction which is given by the EHL and the HL. So this is the well known Strybeck curve. So and for example, if we take the example of engine, so this range is for cam and follower. So cam and follower will give a range of this coefficient of friction because they run in the boundary lubrication case. They cannot achieve hydrodynamic lubrication or piston rings. So between piston and cylinder liner, we can get a coefficient of friction which will be something from boundary lubrication to hydrodynamic lubrication. So we can get a range of coefficient of friction depending upon the situation because in the piston cylinder liner case, it is a reciprocating mo motion and therefore there is variation of the speed of the piston from zero to a maximum and again back to zero. So therefore it will vary, the coefficient of friction will vary from boundary lubrication to hydrodynamic lubrication. And all kinds of engine bearings will operate in the EHL to hydrodynamic lubrication in a normal situation. But of course for any bearing if it is going to start and stop during the start and stop conditions it will be boundary lubrication and mixed lubrication. So this is the, the way we can understand Strybeck curve how the friction changes with this parameter Hersey number the viscosity multiplied by the rotational speed divided by the pressure and at certain value of Hersey number we can get the lowest coefficient of friction which corresponds with EHL or hydrodynamic lubrication. Below that if the number is lower than that then we have high coefficient of friction. So as I said before the, the curve which was proposed by Strybeck from his experimental investigation is now referred to as Strybeck diagram or Strybeck curve. So it was proposed in 1901 and 1902. However, Thurston posed similar results in 1873. The Strybeck curve basically gives us different lubrication regimes. So in this curve, the coefficient of friction is plotted as a function of Hersey number, which is the viscosity multiplied by the RPM of the shaft in a journal bearing and divided by the pressure. So the coefficient of friction actually starts at a higher value for boundary lubrication when there is some solid to solid or surface to surface contact between the shaft and the bearing. As we increase the speed, the coefficient of friction will go down and at some point it will give us 
a very very low value which will be in the range of 0.001 so this is the situation for elastro hydrodynamic lubrication or hydrodynamic lubrication and in this case as we have learned before that if we are talking about the journal bearing so the shaft and this is the bearing so there will be a fluid film between the shaft and the bearing and there will be a change in the film thickness from the minimum to a maximum. So this will be the situation. This diagram gives us schematically the position of the piston with respect to the cylinder in an IC engine at various positions. So this is the piston and this represents the cylinder and this is the, the crankshaft. So the piston and the connecting rod is basically rotating the crankshaft and that's how the power is being generated from the engine and the power is transmitted to other parts of the vehicle. So this is the situation of air intake or air and fuel intake here and beyond that. So in this situation the piston comes to a speed of zero because piston comes from here to this position and then back. So therefore it comes to a, a zero speed at this point and after beyond this the piston will actually push. This is the compression regime and in this regime the air fuel mixture is compressed. Then there will be combustion regime. So here the combustion will start. So at this point again the piston will come to a zero velocity and as the combustion starts the piston will be pushed back in this direction and this is the expansion regime and it expands to the, the full extreme. So basically the piston moves from one extreme to the other. So at both extreme positions the piston actually comes to a zero velocity and in between it has got the maximum velocity. So we can say that the coefficient of friction will vary in, in the case of piston and cylinder coefficient of friction. It will be maximum here and this will be the condition of boundary lubrication and as it goes inside during the compression in between it will achieve hydrodynamic lubrication and again it will come to a standstill and after the combustion this piston will be again pushed back and so it will be boundary lubrication and in between there will be hydrodynamic lubrication and elasto hydrodynamic lubrication depending on the materials. So between the piston and the cylinder liner we can achieve all regimes from boundary lubrication, mixed lubrication, EHL and hydrodynamic lubrication and the crankshaft between the crankshaft and the connecting rod also there is a journal bearing situation here between the shaft and the bearing so this also undergoes various regimes of lubrication so an IC engine is a good example of how the Strybeck curve works and how the coefficient of friction changes with Hersey number or it changes with speed and also pressure. In addition to Strybeck curve, we should also look at this curve, which is a modified version of Strybeck curve. Here, the y-axis is still the coefficient of friction, but the x-axis has been changed to film thickness ratio lambda, which is equal to effective film thickness. So film thickness is between the two surfaces that are undergoing relative motion divided by the surface roughness, the average surface roughness. So this ratio is also a good indicator whether the hydrodynamic lubrication can exist or not. So if this ratio is in the range of 10 or more than 5, then we can achieve EHL or hydrodynamic lubrication. At lower range, we will have mixed lubrication or boundary lubrication. So boundary lubrication is when the ratio lambda is less than 1. So this is a very good indicator of uh, whether which what kind of lubrication regime we can achieve. So we should also learn about this, this one. So here again we can see that how the film thickness will change 
or the ratio film thickness ratio will change for cam follower piston ring and cylinder liner and engine journal bearing so this is another way to look at the same Strabeck curve but in the original Strabeck curve which is given by this is the one which 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 is known as Strabeck diagram or Strabeck curve I would like to summarize Strabeck curve or diagram is a plot of the coefficient of friction versus the Hersey number. The Hersey number is given as the dynamic viscosity multiplied by speed divided by bearing pressure and is varied from zero to a high value. This curve clearly separates the different lubrication regimes that can exist in a journal or plane bearing at different ranges of the Hersey number. At very low Hersey number, boundary lubrication regime occurs. For very high values, elastohydrodynamic and hydrodynamic lubrication regimes are operative. In between, we can obtain mixed lubrication regime. If you have any question or comment, please write them down below in the comment section.